It can be painfully frustrating when debugging doesn't work and we spread random console logs around instead. That's why we learn how to set up debugging for Next.js in all possible combinations. VS Code, Chrome DevTools, Server Side, Client Side, Full Stack, Turbo Pack, Turbo Repo. We'll start from a plain JavaScript app and build up knowledge, which we'll then apply to Next.js. Links to all the source code are down below. Starting with the most simple example, we've got a plain HTML file with two buttons. And we've got a plain JavaScript file with event handlers attached to the buttons. So everything should work out of the box with this app. And if you go to Chrome, you go to the sources tab, we can see the JavaScript file here. I can put a breakpoint in and we expect everything to work out of the box. And when I click the button, it indeed does. Let's introduce a build step next because that's what all real world applications have anyways. So we're just going to minify the file into a transpile.js file. And in the index.html, we are going to change the main.js to transpile. As you can see, we now only have access to the transpiled file in the DevTools. In this particular example, the file is still pretty humanly readable, but in a real world context, this might not be the case. So it would be nice to be able to set breakpoints in the original file. To be able to set breakpoints in the original JavaScript or TypeScript file, you need to have your bundler generate source maps. In our example, using esbuild, we achieve that by appending dash dash source map. The source map file contains a mapping which enables the debugger to figure out what parts of the transpiled file correspond to what parts of the original file. Going back to DevTools, we can now see two JavaScript files the original one that we wrote, and the transpiled one. The Chrome DevTools also let you group by authored slash deployed. So authored files would be the ones that you write, and deployed ones would be the transpiled ones. And I found this option very useful. And by the way, ignore the stuff from React Developer Tools here. This is just some noise coming from Chrome extensions. With the source map generated, let's not put it to a test. Let's set a breakpoint in the original main.js file. Let's click the button and we see it works because the debugger correctly pauses. Let's now shift our focus to debugging server-side JavaScript, which is also going to come in handy when debugging Next.js as Next.js apps consist of both client-side and server-side JavaScript. Here is our server code, which is a plain Node.js server with two simple endpoints, and we want to be able to set breakpoints in there using the Chrome DevTools. To be able to do that, we need to pass an inspect flag when launching the server using Node. This will instruct Node.js to attach a debugger we can then connect to. In Chrome, we have two options for launching the debugger connected to the running Node.js instance. The first one is by navigating to chrome colon double slash inspect and pressing the inspect button in the list of remote targets. And the second being by opening the DevTools and pressing the Node.js icon in the top left corner. Regardless of which method we choose, a new instance of DevTools should open up. And if we navigate to the sources tab, we'll see our server.js file and we should be able to set a breakpoint in there. To test out if the breakpoint is doing its job, let's hit the hello endpoint on the server, go back to the debugger, and we can see that the code got paused where we set our breakpoint, and we can inspect all the local variables. And by the way, if we have a build step, let our server is written in TypeScript, which we compile to JavaScript, and then run using Node with the inspect flag, we'll be able to set breakpoints in the original TypeScript file as long as we generate source maps. The next step in our debugging journey is to debug both client-side and server-side JavaScript in VS Code itself, so we don't have to go back and forth between our code editor and Chrome DevTools. Starting with client-side debugging, simply setting a breakpoint in VS Code, going to the browser, clicking one of the buttons, isn't going to trigger the debugger because we haven't established any sort of a link between the VS Code debugger and the running instance of our app. To do that, we need to open up the debug panel, press the debug URL button, hit enter, and VS Code will launch a browser instance with the VS Code debugger attached to it. If we now press the button where we set our breakpoint, we can inspect everything in VS Code, just like we did in Chrome DevTools. And by the way, 
It all plays nicely with source maps as long as VS Code can find them, which we'll get to later. Now switching to debugging server-side JavaScript, there are two high-level options in VS Code. The first one being attaching the VS Code debugger to a running Node.js instance in the same way that we did with the Chrome DevTools, and the second being launching the Node.js app in VS Code with the debugger attached, like most other server-side debuggers do. The easiest way for the attach mode is to start the server with the inspect flag like we did earlier and then run the attach to node process command in VS Code. We can set a breakpoint directly in our VS Code file. And by the way, this is the original TypeScript file, not the compiled JavaScript file. Then we can go to the browser, hit the URL of the endpoint, and we'll see that the code breaks where we set the breakpoint. Let's disconnect the debugger for now and take a look at what other options we have. The best practice, however, is to create a launch.json file when you can pre-configure different ways of launching the debugger with more detailed config options. So let's do that by pressing the create launch.json file in the left panel. We then press node.js and VS Code will create for us a pre-configured option of launching the server with the debugger attached. So let's test it out by pressing the play button next to our chosen configuration option. We can then head to the browser, hit refresh on the endpoint, and we are taken back to VS Code. So we can see that it works both in the attach mode and in the launch mode. And by the way, you can also add a configuration option for the attach mode by pressing add configuration and selecting Node.js attached. Now that we've equipped ourselves with knowledge about debugging both client-side and server-side JavaScript in both VS Code and Chrome DevTools, we can start applying it for debugging Next.js applications and also see what adjustments we need to make if we use Turbo Pack or Turbo Repo. One important thing to keep in mind with modern Next.js applications is that we have to be careful whether we're dealing with server or client components as we'll need different configurations for each of them. However, there's a way to set up a combined client-side and server-side debugging in VS Code, which we'll get to later. For now, let's focus on client-side debugging, which mostly works out of the box. Our Next.js app consists of one layout file, which is a server component, and one page file, which is a client component that renders two buttons. If we open the app in Chrome and go to the sources tab, you'll see that we have access to our files in the NE folder, which is where for some reason Next.js publishes the source maps. So let's open the folder, open the page.tsx file, set a breakpoint, click the button, and we'll see that everything works out of the box. And by the way, notice that you won't see the layout.tsx file because it's a server component. We can also use VS Code for client-side debugging. And we already know how to do it. So let's open up the debug panel, press the create launch.json file, select Web App Chrome or Edge if that's what you prefer. And then we need to change the config a bit. Let's give it a more meaningful name and let's change the port to 3000. Finally, set a breakpoint in our event handler, launch the debugger, and when we press the button in the browser opened by VS Code, the code successfully pauses where we set the breakpoint. Now onto server-side debugging. At first, we need to somehow pass the dash dash inspect flag onto the Node.js process that runs the Next.js server, which we can achieve by prepending a Node.js options and variable with dash dash inspect before the next dev command in our package.json file. And don't worry, this doesn't hurt performance in any way if the debugger is not connected. One thing to watch out for is that you don't want to prepend the node options variable before your npm, pnpm, or yarn command as that exposes the debugger for the package manager itself rather than Next.js. So that's why I prepend it in the dev script itself. So let's launch the app, open Chrome and navigate to Chrome colon double slash inspect and inspect the running Node.js process. However, if we try to inspect the files, you'll notice that the only thing you'll see is a bunch of compiled and internal files 
and you won't see the layout file that we want to debug. The reason why it's not working properly is that Next.js for some reason actually launches two node processes and we connect it to the wrong one. The debugger we should connect to is running on port 9230 as per the message Next.js gives us in the terminal, but Chrome by default doesn't look out for debuggers running on that port. Fortunately, we can configure it by pressing the configure button and specifying the URL of our debugger. When we do that, we'll notice there is another process running that we can connect to. So let's do that by pressing the inspect button. Next, let's visit our app, go to the debugger, and we'll see that we have access to all the files. So let's set a breakpoint inside of the layout file, visit the app again, and you'll see that the code has successfully paused where we set the breakpoint. And of course, we can also use VS Code for debugging server-side Next.js. To set it up, open the launch.json file, press the add configuration button, select Node.js attach, and we want to change the name to something more meaningful, and most importantly, change the port to 9230. We can now launch the server-side debugger, open our layout file, sets a breakpoint, refresh the app, and we see that the debugger works. Now that we know how to debug both server-side and client-side Next.js, let's combine these into a single full-stack debugging configuration. In our launch.json, we can create a component configuration, which is going to launch both server-side and client-side debugging configurations at once. To do that, We'll create a new compound section, give it a name, and in the configurations field, we'll specify an array of names of the configurations we want to launch. In our case, this would be Next.js debug client side and Next.js debug server side. And finally, we'll set stop all to true, which ensures that when you stop one debugging process, all the other ones in your compounds configurations are stopped too. We can now set breakpoints in both our server-side code and client-side code, launch our full-stack debugging configuration, and we see that the code first breaks at the breakpoint in our layout file, which runs on the server. And if we hit the play button, Go to the browser launched by VS Code, click one of the buttons, the client-side breakpoint in our event handler comes in action. By the way, Next.js docs recommend a slightly different method for full-stack debugging, which is to have VS Code launch the Next.js binary and then open the browser. But I found the method of attaching the debugger to a running Next.js process and then using compound config to be more handy. As you might know, Next.js dev server can sometimes be painfully slow, and the tool that aims to solve that is Turbo Pack. So let's add dash dash turbo to our dev script and see if we need to make any adjustments in our debugging workflow. Starting with client side Chrome DevTools, I can see my files under localhost, turbo pack, project, and when I set a breakpoint, it works just fine. Chrome DevTools also work out of the box for debugging server-side code. I can inspect, see my files under Turbo Pack, Project. I can set a breakpoint in my layout file. And when I refresh the page, the code breaks. Let's put VS Code to a test. Leaving the breakpoints in both client-side and server-side code in place, let's launch the full-stack configuration we defined earlier. However, after the debug launches, we'll see that both the server-side and the client-side breakpoints fail to bind. Whenever an unbound breakpoint error occurs, it usually signifies a problem with source maps. More specifically, the fact that VS Code couldn't find source maps for our compiled files. The crux of the problem is that VS Code is having a hard time figuring out that files under Turbo Pack project correspond to our files in the root of the project. Now you might be asking, why didn't we have the same problem for the Webpack files, which were also nested under a Webpack folder? The answer lies in the source map path overrides config option, which you can specify in your launch.json. This config option lets us create a mapping between the locations of our source maps and the locations of our files in VS Code. And by default, the VS Code debugger already has pre-configured options for Webpack, but for some reason, the pre-configured option for TurboPack is wrong, so we have to specify it manually. 
Opening our launch.json, let's add the source map path overrides config option to our server side configuration. And we want to map all the files under turbo pack slash project to all the files in the root of our project in VS Code. And let's do the same for our client side configuration as well. Leaving the breakpoints from early in place, we'll launch the full stack debugging again. And this time it works both for the server code and after clicking the button for the client code as well. And if you're using a monorepo architecture with Next.js, for example, turbo repo, the config that we've just defined also works there. You just have to be careful about specifying the correct ports for the application and for the debugger. And lastly, I'd avoid using the full stack configuration that Next.js recommends, where it has VS Code launch the app for you, as it doesn't play nicely with the monorepo architecture. That said, our compound config for full stack debugging works just fine, and I prefer it anyways. Before I say goodbye, if you've learned something new, I'd very much appreciate you liking and subscribing. It does help a lot, especially for small and new channels like mine. And links to all the source code of the debugging configuration files are down below in the description. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them and see you next time.